Good, good morning. Good evening, Revelation Church. How many people are ready to receive a fresh touch of God tonight? How many people are ready to receive a fresh touch of God tonight? A fresh, a fresh, a new, a fresh beginning tonight? Because His goodness and His mercy endures forever. How many people have experienced that this week? How many people have literally experienced God's goodness, God's mercy, His grace? How many people have experienced that? If you have, I need y'all to shout hallelujah. Because if you haven't, you're going to experience it tonight. You're going to experience it tonight. Because God's glory is in this building. He's in this building. He's ready to shake things up. I need the people of God to shake things up. I need you guys to lift up your voice. Lift up your voice and shake this up. Shake it up. Shake it up. Let heaven hear you. Let TV hear you. God, let me hear you. Hey. Hey, Lord, you're good. Hey. Woo.
trade this cross for a crown, it's not the end. And when you call my name, I will take my rest. There's a mansion in glory and you're gonna meet me there. I shall not want, I shall not want. He will wipe every tear in my eyes, I shall not want. Come on, let's sing. I shall not. Hey, I shall not. Oh, I'll be home in His presence forever. I shall not. Why? I shall not. Why? I shall not. Oh, I'll be home in His presence forever. I shall not. Why? I shall not want For the Lord is my shepherd And see me valley For the Lord is my shepherd When I'm lacking today oh it's so good to see you once again i know it's gone for two weeks but it's good to be in the house of god 
Oh, we worship the living God in this place. We worship our Savior. We worship our God. He is a man of his word. He is a God who is faithful to his promise. If he said it, he will do it. If he said it, you can count on it. You can trust on his word. You can hang on his word in the middle of the storm. You can hang on the word that he spoke over your life. If he said your family will be saved, you can hang on that word even when it doesn't look like it, even when they look like they're more lost. You can hang on his word because he will see it through and everything he started, he will complete it. All the good work that he started in your life, he won't leave you halfway. He won't leave you to try. His word won't fall on the ground. He is faithful. He is able, more than able to do abundantly, exceedingly, above everything we could think, everything we can ask. Before we pray, he already knows. Before we came, he was already here. Before you set the prayer up, he already knows your need. He's already working in your favor. He's already turning things around. So we don't sing because we need something. We sing prophetically knowing he already did it. It's already done. Oh, we worship you in this place, Lord. Hallelujah.
If you said it, I don't believe it. I've seen how good it was. If you start it, you'll complete it. I'll take you at your word, not my own luck. If you said it, I believe it. I've seen how good it works, Lord, you're so good, Lord. If you start it, you'll complete it. Oh, yes, Lord. You are so good, you are so faithful. Mm, who am I that you should think of me, but you do, Lord? You didn't just save me and leave me there, you made promises. You have purpose for me. You wrote my story. My story is full of glory, Lord. And we love you, Jesus. We are privileged to be called yours. We are privileged to be sons and daughters. You are faithful. You are faithful, Lord. You are faith, you are faithful, Jesus. And you said your love. Hey. And you said your grace is more than enough. And you said your heart will never forget me, no. You said I'm saved, and you call me yours. I know you've never failed, so you won't start now, Lord. We trust in you, Jesus. We trust in your faithfulness. Yeah. I don't know what word you're hanging on, but just know that he is faithful. Just know that he is faithful. Sometimes God doesn't operate in our time. Sometimes it takes longer than we would like, but God is always on point. God is always perfect. And at the end, it is always for your good. It is always better his way than our way. That is why we don't lean on our understanding because then we fall when we're leaning on it. But when we lean in him, when we lean in his promises, when we, when we are grateful, when we look at our, our brothers that are receiving what they pray for, we can build up our faith knowing oh, my time is coming. Oh, God's on the, on the same avenue. God is in this building. If he did it for them, he can do it for me. Oh, I can trust in you, God. Mm, I can trust in you, Jesus. I can trust in you, Jesus. I can trust in you, Jesus. Oh, we praise you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. You are so faithful. You are so faithful. You are so faithful. Yes, you are so faithful. You are so faithful. When I look back at my life, I see you that. Are so faithful. When I see all the miracles, I see you that. Are so faithful. When I see what you have done in this place, you are so faithful. When we look at this beautiful building, we see you that. Are so faithful. When I see how you take care of me, you are so faithful. When I see I never lack, I never need, you are so faithful. You supply for me, Lord. You are so faithful. You, I am your child. I know you are so faithful. You are my shepherd, Lord. You are so faithful. I shall never lack, cause you are. You are so faithful. You are so good. You are so faithful. You are so faithful. Yes, you are so faithful. You are so faithful. You are so faithful, how many testify? You are so faithful. Yes, you are so faithful. 
heart And you are worthy of it you will not hinder <laughs> what God's people <laughs> hallelujah are getting ready to get on tonight hallelujah and we break every spirit of hindrance in the name of Jesus hallelujah 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 Lord we thank you for your peace oh rise on tonight we're going to give you what's due on tonight oh God because when we walk out of here God we'll never be the same 
and every weight that we came in here with, oh God, we're going to walk out without it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, there's freedom in the atmosphere on tonight. Lord, I thank you for your freedom, oh God. Hallelujah. Rest in this place.
take you through a phase, a season that you never thought you'd ever go through. You know, I, I bought a house in, in Atlanta, right? I was so happy about it. <laughs> in less than six months, we, we lost that house. And God said, I'm moving you to California. I said, California, he said, I'll move you to California. You're not gonna win that case because we tried to file a motion. We didn't win that case. We had to get out in three days, y'all. It took me hours. As soon as I was getting ready to cry, the Lord said, look. I looked at my U-Haul, my U-Haul said Hollywood. <laughs> so look, we came, we thought we was prepared. Okay, we got the money, it was around tax time, right? So, so we got this. We gonna get there, we gonna give them a deposit, we good. But forgot that when we lost our house, our credit wasn't, wasn't too good. So we looked around and, and God blessed us. I'm saying blessed us because even though we're in a hotel, we've been in a hotel since April, me, my six children, and my husband. Even though, let me tell you something. At first I fussed, I turned, I, I cried. Then I said, Lord, I don't understand. God said, don't lean on your own understanding. Lean on my peace that surpasses all understanding. Because you might not get the understanding until five years later, but if you lean on my peace, how that I see, it will it will pull, it will pull you through. And 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 so I just began to get settled. I began to have peace, and I said, Lord, I thank you because I got running water. I thank you because the water is clean. I thank you because I can cook in here. I can bring food in here. I thank you because I have shelter over my head, and I didn't even begin to worry about it anymore. I didn't even care about it. If I don't never get a house, God, I'm still going to bless you. If I don't never get a house, I'm still going to bless your name. Because you are the provider. You are my provider. I can walk. I can talk. I can raise my head. And I'm not on the streets. Because you are yet yeah, my provider. Because we say, we didn't get what we want, but God said, I know what you need. And I'm able to provide. I said, clean water. Food on my table. Shelter over my head. It could have been worse. Oh, it could have been worse. Somebody better give God a praise up in here. Because no matter what the devil tried, Joy. I still got my joy. Devil can't take it away. I still got my joy. Hey, hey, that's freedom in this atmosphere. Hey, the enemy trying to hinder it. <laughs> oh, but that's freedom in this atmosphere. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Provider, way maker. Provider. If you ever been on state assistance, you know that ain't enough for six kids. <laughs> I'm 
I'm telling you, God has stepped in and provided and stepped in every gap. He's filled in every gap. Hey. Oh. Hey, Jesus. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I haven't done praise and worship since 2020. God just pulled me back. He reconstructed, began to rebuild, redownload, and reteach, and make me pure. <laughs> Ooh. And somehow, some way, I, my mama, my mama said, have you ever heard of a Revelation church? I said, I had an attitude. I said, no, because I'm not going unless the Lord sent me. And I went to sleep, had a regular dream, and this man was in my dream. I said, okay, God, all right. When God said he bought, was bringing me to California, I, didn't, I had no idea what was going to happen. such an attitude but God said I'm sending you to Revelation Church <laughs> hallelujah where you'll be able to fellowship and download and receive and you'll begin to be refilled again how many want to be refilled I want to be refilled I don't care about the fame the glory I want Jesus because when all it is is over I want him to say well done my good and faithful son Somebody in here to say hallelujah. One, two, three.
shout your praise. Our hearts will cry and these bones will sing great. fill this place with praise and worship. I see all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you Lord. All the earth will all the earth will shout your thank you for your mercy we thank you for your love we thank you for who you are we thank you that you remain the same your love is unconditional you don't love us because of anything we have done but you love us because you have decided Lord you decided that we should be in this house tonight father have mercy on us cleanse us and purify us of every iniquity of every sin of every thought of every action for every single unclean thing we have connected ourselves with, we have joined ourselves with, Lord Jesus, have mercy on us. Cleanse us by reason of the blood of Jesus. Cause us to stand pure before you, that we may receive every good and perfect gift that you have ordained for us. Father, reveal yourself unto us. May we receive the portion you have ordained for us. Father, may we receive the portion you have ordained for our families, for our nation, and for everyone that you have given to us. Lord Jesus, glorify yourself. Holy Spirit, glorify yourself. God the Father, glorify yourself. May we see your face, O Lord our God. In the mighty name of Jesus, may every evil spirit be under our feet. May every evil agenda be destroyed. Father, may we receive our portion. Lift up your voice and call on God to give you your portion. Call on Him. Call on Him. Call on Him. Era masika paria tebeya. Ela masute peria makado. Oria masontere mekida ankrodova. Revenderi aria 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 mahoya Isra mandori materia iria masoka Fremanduri maseke prediga acro Revende peria di baharu ria mese teberia da Eromasia teberia ase 
in Jesus name in Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah you can stand on your feet as you clap your hands to the king hallelujah you can clap better for Jesus you can clap better for Jesus the king of kings clap better for him hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Somebody shout God is good. God is good. Touch your neighbor say the Lord has something special for you. The Lord has something special for you. There is a special portion just for you. There is a special portion just for you. I can't hear you. There is a special portion just for you. Look at your neighbor say as long as you're living. As long as you're living. As long as you're breathing. As long as you're breathing. There is something special for you. There is something special for you. There is a special portion for you. There is a special portion for you. Do you have room to receive it? Do you have room to receive it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think your neighbor didn't respond well. Find another neighbor that will respond better. Say neighbor. Neighbor. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I see in the spirit. I see in the spirit. Through the visions of God. Through the visions of God. That there is something special for you. That there is something special for you. There is a special portion just for you. There is a special portion just for you. Do you have room to receive it? Do you have room to receive it? Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Wait, 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 wait. I think the people online overflow. Are you here? Are you sure? Wave your hands. Let me hear your shout. Okay, I think you need to prophesy to another person, one more person. And if your neighbor is not talking to you, find another neighbor. Make sure your prophecy can land somewhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Find your neighbor. Find your different neighbor. Not a neighbor you know. Find somebody you don't know. I will give you the signal to prophesy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have found your neighbor, wave your hands if you have found him. Uh, Charles, you don't have your neighbor. Where's your... You know Mama Ghana. Find a neighbor you don't know. Why are this... If you're prophesying to the people you know, I will call thunder on you. Find somebody you don't know. Find a stranger. That after your prophecy, there will no longer be a stranger. Amen. But you'll be one body in Christ. Amen. Are you ready to prophesy? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at them, say, neighbor. Neighbor, in the name of Jesus, in the name name of Jesus I prophesy to you, I prophesy to you by visions of God. By visions of God, I know Jesus, I know Jesus has a special portion for you. Has a special portion, portion just, for you. Just, for you just for you and your family. Just for you and your family. Do you have room to receive it? Do you have room to receive it? Glory to, God. Glory to God. Please understand this by the Spirit of God. Your capacity to receive is because of how great you believe God to be. Amen. Amen. You see, our God cannot show himself beyond your faith. Your faith determines how much of God you will see. This is why the Bible says faith comes by hearing. Meaning that your faith is unlocked by the correct information. So faith cannot grow because of prayer. Some people pray with the wrong information. Prayer is good. But you can pray amiss. 
not all prayer is prayer. Some is a loud noise. And some is true prayer. And some is a monologue. You're talking to yourself, thinking you're talking to God. Are you listening to me? Yes. But when you know that God is able to do above and beyond, exceedingly, abundantly, yes. then your expectation when you say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. When you begin to call him, you are not calling for, you to, for him to tell you, I will give you this, then you try to expand yourself. No. By that you are already late. God cannot send something that you're not ready for. And God will not send a blessing so that it stays outside and waits for you to receive. Somebody else will take it. Are you listening to me? Somebody else will snatch it from you. But, oh, I receive mama. <laughs> but if you make room available, when you call on God, God knows you are ready to receive it. God will not hesitate. Amen. Look at your neighbor. Say, God will never hesitate. God will never hesitate. No, the Bible says he will not withhold anything good from you. He doesn't. He says he will satisfy your mouth with good things. But if you are just used to McDonald's, God wants to take you to a five-star restaurant where the meal takes a little longer to prepare. Amen. But you're so used to fast food. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. When you go to a good restaurant, you expect it to be, to come a certain way. Funny enough, cooking well done takes a shorter time than William, medium rare. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your taste determines how it will come. So when you're sitting on the table of God, if you want fast food, he doesn't do that. Everything that God does, it may seem like it takes time, but it doesn't. This is why in Habakkuk it says this. Wait for the vision even though it tarry, but the vision will not tarry. So it is an illusion thinking that it's taking long. Are you listening to me? Put your right hand on your head. Say, Lord, Lord. Give, me give me mental capacity. Give me mental capacity to receive the impossible. To receive the incredible. the incredible, to see beyond where I am. To see beyond where I am. Oh Lord, my God. Oh Lord, my God. By your grace, by your grace, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Expand me, Holy Spirit. Expand me, Holy Spirit. That I may receive of you. That I may receive of you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Grab your Bibles as quickly as you can. Genesis chapter number 15 and beginning from verse 1. Genesis chapter 15 beginning from verse 1 to 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we all read it together? One, two, three. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram. I am, I am thy, thy shield, shield and thy exceeding great reward. And, and Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is the Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, this shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. You may sit in heavenly places. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor. Say neighbor. Neighbor. You may sit, but don't sit on your mouth. You may sit, but don't sit on your mouth. I can hear you. 
Neighbor, you may sit, but don't sit on your mouth. I can't hear you. Say it again. Neighbor, you may sit, but don't, don't sit on your, your mouth. mouth. Uh, are you sure? Please say it one more time. You may sit, but don't sit on your mouth. Now, tonight I'm going to teach you a message that the Lord gave me right before I came. As you know my culture, I don't like to teach what he hasn't told me. What he has not given to my spirit, I can't teach you. There's a difference between teaching what you studied and giving God's word. What you study is for you. It's not for everyone. But there is a special message to give to everybody. That God has gathered together unto himself for his own glory, for his own pleasure. God will gather you to give you something specific for them. When Moses came from the mountain, he did not come to tell them what God said to him. He came to tell them only what God said to them. What God said to him was for him and for his house. And sometimes not even his wife, not his children, but for him. Unless God says reveal it, they cannot reveal it. But there is a message for the people. So I want you to understand this. Uh, tonight's message is spiritual demand. Somebody say spiritual demand. Spiritual demand. Now, there are things that you need to understand as a child of God that there is a demand on your life. And there is a process that God must bring somebody through in order for God to give you what he has ordained for you. Now, there is a lot of doctrines that we have wrong as believers and because we have those doctrines wrong it is also our limitation in our spiritual elevation if you have the wrong foundation you cannot build a house even though it seems good it does not mean it is good the right foundation is usually not apparent when you look at a building you don't see how deep the foundation goes but it is in the depth of the foundation that it determines how tall the building will be so if the foundation is wrong, then the building will not stand. When a storm comes, the building will fall. When a flood comes, the building will be destroyed. So the foundation of a believer is not by what they confess, but it is by what they manifest. Uh, let me find somebody that I can talk to. Let me find somebody that I can speak to. The foundation of a believer is not in what you claim, but it is in what you can give. Anyone can say something, but not everyone can give something. Are you listening to what I'm saying? The wrong foundation is your limitation. And unless you uproot and undo the foundation, you cannot build a building that will get you into heaven. Remember, the ones that designed the Tower of Babel, they had a divine revelation of God. Even though it was in a perverted way, but it was the right thing. The Bible says that you are the temple of God. You are a temple that is connected to heaven. But this man did not want to build the temple that God will indwell. They wanted to build a building that they can access God and God not access them. And because of the wrong foundation, God confounded their language. Why did God confound their language? Because they built the tower because of the long, wrong language. If you have the wrong information... You will speak the wrong way. You will build the wrong building and God will have to turn you down. But if you build correctly with the right words, the cornerstone being Jesus, then your building will stand the test of time. Amen. And it will get into the heavens. Amen. And angels will ascend and descend upon you. Amen. And things will change for you. Now listen to me by the spirit of God. We are going somewhere. Look at your neighbor say we're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. There is a special demand that God places on every single individual that is walking upon the earth. And that, de that demand is based on where God is taking you or what God created you for. Now before we can even get into what you are asking God for because you are praying for good things... But because the foundation is wrong, God cannot give it to you. You may be praying for a husband. God wants to give you that. You may be praying for a wife. God wants to give you that. But God is asking what is in for him. Because for everything you ask God for, there is a spiritual demand. Of amen. Amen. So good. I, I feel like I'm going somewhere. 
God came to Abraham. Uh, before, let me, let me go into this. Let me explain this. To live for God, when people say you must run away from sin and live pure, that does not qualify you to be blessed by God. No, it doesn't. How many Christians you know that pray, they fast, and they have nothing? Living pure is what you're supposed to be. That's what you're created for. It, you don't get special privileges because of it. Anyone who lives in sin will perish. So for your own sake, the reward of purity is life. Are you listening to me? But to live pure does not mean you have money in your account. This is why some people get confused. When they look at some of us the way God caused us to be. They would demonize us and they would demonize the world. Because they'll say, you look like the world. As if the clothes they bought was bought in heaven. <laughs> Are you understanding what I'm saying? But the idea of the world is that if you can succeed like the world, then you're not of God. But yet the Bible is saying the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Every blessing you have on earth came from a wicked person. Amen. Teaching good, prophet. Good. Let me find somebody that I will talk to. There is nothing that you have. Right now you have money in your bank. You don't know where it came from. You don't know if it was blood money, ritual money. But when it came to you, yeah. it received a different purpose. Yes. That it did not matter where it came from. It matters what God wants you to do with it. Yeah. I prophesy to somebody yeah. that your portion will come to you. Receive. So, so capture this by the Spirit. Sit down for two seconds. So what commands the blessing is not living for Jesus. Living for Jesus qualifies you for heaven. Now, we even get salvation wrong. We get salvation completely wrong. So many believers, you hear them introducing themselves. Oh, uh, uh, what is your, oh, my name is so and so. I, I, I gave my life to Jesus 50 years ago. No, Jesus gave his life to you. Amen. You didn't give your life to Jesus. Amen. Are you understanding what I'm saying? If the life you're living, God has not placed a demand on it, you did not give him your life. He gave you his life. Let me find somebody that will be mature enough to understand this. When Jesus gives our life to us, when he gave our life to us, when his life to us, when we received him, he gave his life to us, we became alive. Now our life was no longer going to end in death. But we received a new life, a new way God gave it to us. But that life also can be useless if there is no spiritual demand on it. You will live long, but you will not accomplish anything for the kingdom of God. You will live long, but your life will not change anybody's life. But when God gives his life to you, and you give your life to him, you no longer live for you. You live for him. Living pure is good. It must be done. But you're doing it to maintain your relationship with him. Not because God will reject you. Because God loves us beyond sin. But for you to remain in that place, you need to be sinless. It benefits you and me, not God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So as you're walking with God, you need to understand that many of you are sitting here. You love Jesus. How many love Jesus? Wave your hands. How many people love Jesus? You say, Lord Jesus, you're the Lord and Savior of my life. Bishop, you don't say that. <laughs> you see, you've given that Jesus has given his life to you. It doesn't mean you have given your life to him. You see, the Lord Jesus said this. He said, unless I am in you and you in me. The process begins by Jesus giving you his life. 
Then when you are made alive, you realize that if I live for myself, even though I have his life, it is useless. I need to give my life to him. Then Jesus said, when you do this, then you will bear what? Much fruit. A life that is given to God, there is a demand of increase. Amen, amen. Uh, let me find somebody that I can talk to. The reason why the day you came to Christ, you gave your life, or how we say you gave your life, or he gave your life to you, and you confessed him, everything started going bad. Mm -hmm. Ah, God. Ah. <laughs> oh, Lord, my God. When I wasn't, you know, when I was out here in these streets, man, life was good. <laughs> I had no lack. I, I mean, I was doing just, now I can't even sleep at night. I'm being tormented. Now I can't do this. Everything is gone. There's always a battle. God, why? When I was in the world, I didn't need to plead the blood now. What is going on? It's because... Even your dreaming, there is a demand on it. If you will not give God even your sleep where he can talk to you. Come on. Mm, so good, so Come good. On. Some people didn't get it. <laughs> when you give your life, even your dream, God will come to give you instruction. To benefit somebody, to increase somebody, Amen. to show you the way in which you should go. Amen. Even your dreaming belongs to him. There is a demand. The reason why there is struggle is that you receive that life. But God cannot demand anything of you. So therefore there is no provision that he is obligated to give you. Because you are not doing anything for him. He did everything for you. You are not in any position... To ask him for something, what he gave you is sufficient, eternal life. But if you're going to have something on earth that will outlive you, God must place a demand on you. God came to Abraham and he said, Abraham, leave your father and mother's house, go unto a land I will show you. Abraham was just happy that God came to him. Many of you don't know that Abraham was an idol worshiper. He did not come from a, a, a Christian background. He's a man that God appeared to. And God pulled him out of his people because his people didn't know God. And Abraham encountered God. God told him, leave these people. I will bless you. I will increase you. I will make you this. I will make you that. Abraham packed up everything and left. Abraham left because there was something that was going to benefit him. You see, when God blesses you in the beginning... Is to stir you up to experience his life in you. But after you enter in that life, you start to realize, well, I have this, I have that, but I am not fulfilled. So Abraham now in Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, God comes to him. Now he tells him what he wants. He says, Abraham... Listen to me. I will make you a great nation. Abraham says, uh, Lord, you took me from my father's house. Let's, let's, go, let's go to verse 1. Look at this. I want you to see Abraham's response to God. Genesis 15 verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Verse 2, Abraham answered God, Lord, will thou give me, what will thou give me, seeing I go childless? Abraham said, you gave me gold, you gave me silver, you've given me everything. Every reward I could get, I have. I have no heir. I have no seed. You see, many of you think the blessing is in the silver and the gold. If there is no demand on your bloodline. Come on. So good, prophet. Let me find somebody I'll talk to. Abraham 
received every blessing a man could want in life. He said, God, you are saying I will be, you are my great exceeding uh, in, uh, reward. I have everything. What else will you give me? I don't even have an heir. Notice his problem wasn't gold anymore. His problem wasn't silver anymore. His problem wasn't land anymore. He started having a desire that was beyond silver and gold. But he did not know that that desire he developed, that thing that he wanted the most, was also the thing that God was going to place a demand on. The reason why God cannot bless you is because if he gives you that thing, you would withhold it from him. Lord, give me this. God is saying, no problem. But if I ask for it, will you give it to me? Now the question is, why is God placing a demand on us? God doesn't need anything. Why is he placing a demand on us? It's a huge question. Please try to sit for two seconds. We're going somewhere. Why is God placing a demand on us? What for? Before I tell you that there are three things that God will always demand from somebody that gives his life to him. <laughs> the first one is your life. The second one is your ways. And when I'm talking about ways here, I'm not talking about uh, 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 your character and things. No, no, no. Your ways speaking about what you want to achieve in life. Amen. Number three, your children. Amen. These three things, anyone that wants to to give his life to God. Understand that God will come for these three things. But why is God coming for them? Why does God want them? Why is God moved to want this? God comes to Abraham in Genesis, I believe. What is this? Uh, Genesis uh, chapter 22. Let's go to Genesis chapter 22 from verse 1. I won't preach for long because we are going to pray and that's it. But listen to this. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, I am here. Verse 22. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. And offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. Ah. Abraham, you know what you love the most? I gave it to you, right? Actually, I didn't give it to you for you. I gave it to you for me. Everything that you keep, you will lose. The reason why God demands is not because God needs it. The Bible says, store up your treasures where? In heaven. Where there are no thieves, where nobody can take that thing from you. When God came to demand Isaac, it was not because God wanted Isaac to die. God wanted Isaac to be placed in the spirit where come on teaching good prophet the reason why your children are going crazy is because you never gave them to God Woo! you tried to save them and by trying to save them you lost them the reason why business is not working is because you never gave the business to God. God doesn't need your business. God doesn't need your money. Yeah. But God wants you to hide your treasures. Amen. Amen. I feel like he went over somebody's head. Let me, let me try and make it uh, enter you properly. Jesus gave his life. 
And by giving his life, it was multiplied for life for us. When Jesus our Lord walked on the earth, he will raise the dead, but the dead will still die. Let me explain. Is Lazarus still alive? I can't hear you. Did the young girl that he said, Talita Kumi, is she still alive? She's dead, somewhere buried in Israel. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Dead. Because the mission of Jesus was not to revive the flesh. Yes. Was for him to die as a seed. Yes. So that it can be multiplied yes. into the tree of life. Yes. And by doing so for a temporary, for three days people are going to miss him. Yes. But for eternity people are going to be with him. Amen. Hallelujah. So that life was multiplied. And given to you and to you. Let me talk to overflow. Yes. You, you don't want the man. God gave that life to you and to you and to you and to you Amen. and to me. But without giving that life, it cannot be multiplied. Yesterday I was teaching about obsession and I'll do a part two of it maybe on Friday. And I explained something about spiritual obsession or being obsessed. You see, when you want increase, you don't save. Even if you go in the financial world, they tell you saving money is foolish. You need to invest it. Right? But spiritually, Jesus our Lord is in front of 5,000 men, not counting the women and the children. They come to Jesus, they say, Jesus, send the people away. We have nothing to give them. Let them go and find food for themselves. The Lord Jesus said, why are we sending them away? You give them what to eat. I said, we have nothing to give them. Then a small boy came with uh, uh, five uh, loaves and two fish, presented it to Jesus. The Lord Jesus took the bread and the fish and gave thanks, put it down, and he multiplied. The prayer for multiplication is not, Father, multiply my seed. Learn to give thanks with the small. Amen. <laughs> let me... Let me let me find somebody else that I can tell this. You don't multiply what God has given you by taking and say, Father, multiply my business. No. If you cannot give him thanks for the little thing that you think is little. Amen. Every seed is little. But it doesn't mean its future is little. Amen. You can't pray. I see people fasting, praying, Father, multiply me. God cannot give you increase without thanksgiving. The prayer point for increase is thanksgiving. Jesus took the bread. Say, Father, I thank you that you give us bread to eat. Put it down, broke it. Say, give them the food multiplied. Hannah comes to God. For years crying, give me a baby, Lord. God ignores him. Give me a baby, Lord. God ignores him. Give me a baby, Lord. God ignores him. The day he said, you give me a son, I will give him to you. God gives him babies. If you don't give something to God, it doesn't get more. Amen. Amen. Whatever you put in God gathers interest. So good. Anything you withhold from God, it will die. So God comes to Abraham, says, Abraham, give me your son. Why did God demand Isaac? Because God wanted me and you to exist. God wanted us to receive what is in Abraham. God did not give Abraham all the blessing for Abraham to die with it with his house. That him and Isaac and Sarah will be the only ones that enjoy with Ishmael. No. God was put, he was thinking of you and me. He was thinking about Jesus that will come from him. Abraham, can I really trust you with the seed of Jesus? Give me your son. Because I, God, will have to give my son to you. Amen. Can I trust you to give him... When God comes to you, say, Father, I will do anything. God will say, oh, you'll do anything. Okay, he will give you what you love the most. 
And then come and say, okay, give it to me. So God placed a demand on Abraham with what he loves the most. And this was simply a test of love. It is a test of love. Because God proved his love by giving. God wants you to prove your love by giving. Amen. Anything you do for your own gain is not giving. Whenever you stand before God and anything you do for self is not giving. I'm going to pray for millions so that I, I, you know, I will, I will take care of me and my family and then God's people. You're not thinking about his people as a priority. God will say, nope, you're not ready. Let me find somebody else. You're thinking about your family. God is thinking about his whole family. God is thinking, he's taking your life. And out of your life, he's thinking about so many other individuals that your life is supposed to touch. So God is placing a demand on your life. God is placing a spiritual demand on you. Many of you will fast and pray for breakthrough. But you will not fast and pray for a, a stranger you met. God puts it in your heart. Pray for them. I want to use them. You will not go on your knees and just say, Father, I will fast for them. I will intercede for them genuinely because I just want them to serve your kingdom. You, you will announce it. I've been, I, I, in fact, I've been fasting for you. You just ruined it. God is saying, now you're doing it to get points in the presence of people. To be, for people to clap and say, wow, yay. You have already lost your reward. Because everything that God gives you to do, it always ends up about being self. It becomes dangerous to God. God sees the spirit of Lucifer. God gave Lucifer instruments inbuilt within him in order to worship him. And to show forth his glory that other angelic beings will also worship God. Lucifer started checking himself out. Oof. I'm a handsome, tall angel. Skinny. <laughs> Look at my wings. Who is brighter than me? Woo. Michael got nothing on this. God said, I gave you all this for your own. God kicked him out of heaven. He could not give his life. This is an angel in heaven. He failed the test of giving his life. God glorified him. God anointed him. But when God placed a demand on him, Lucifer wanted to glorify himself. Spiritual being in the presence of God failed. Failed miserably. Failed miserably. Let's go to the Gospels real quick. And we'll finish with this. Hallelujah. Are you still here? Yes. Uh, this yes is too small. Are you still here? Yes. Matthew chapter 16 from verse 24. Matthew 16 from verse 24. Matthew 16 from 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples. Notice this message is not for the world. It's for disciples. This verse you're about to read is not for somebody that is in the world. It's for disciples. You know, Jesus never called us Christians. He called us disciples. The word Christian was actually an insult. Jesus, those crazy people that want to follow Jesus who we killed. But we owned the name and we proved that Jesus is alive. Amen. But as far as God is concerned, we are called disciples, not Christians. 
Because the reason why we fail is because we are Christians, not disciples. When the name disciple is in you, you will follow a leader. Amen. The reason why Christians cannot follow a Amen. Teaching. Is because you are not a disciple. When that label is not in you to understand that actually disciple means Christian. You don't become a Christian then become a disciple. You are a disciple when you enter. That's why we have discipleship. The apostles were Jesus' disciples. Then they graduated to be leaders that will create other what? Disciples. Not build a church. You are all sitting under Revelation Church University. Amen. I am just a lecturer right now for this hour. One day God will raise other lecturers. That Amen. Hallelujah. But God wants you to commit to a teacher. If you cannot commit to somebody, who will lead you to God? Paul said, follow me. As I follow Jesus. He did not say follow Jesus. Anyone that will ever tell you, find God for yourself, find God for yourself, is demon possessed. It's not biblical. There is no one in the scriptures that was raised without another person. Moses needed Jethro. Joshua needed Moses. Just because he says Elijah the Tishbite, it doesn't mean he came from nowhere. Somebody helped him. And Elijah helped not only Elisha, but the sons of the prophet. John the Baptist are disciples. When Jesus came, he said, now my, my, uh, uh, my season is over. Follow him. He did not say follow God. It is a doctrine of devils. People don't understand. It is demonic. This is why we pray, God of Abraham, God of Jacob. You are saying you're not only their descendant, but they are the fathers that went ahead of you. You are following somebody's lane. You're not creating your own. There is no such thing. Amen. That is why the lineage of power and the anointing is cursed, is rare. Somebody will think, because I cast out a demon, I am great. No, you're not. It's called being a Christian. But impact in the world takes people to help you. Amen. Amen. Impact is not something you, you receive simply because you are a Christian, you can cast out a demon. How many people have you brought to Christ? How many people have you elevated in Christ? How many souls have you brought to God? That's impact. Casting out a demon is not deliverance. It is the beginning of deliverance. Let me say it again for... Young people that want to cast out demons. We call it deliverance, but actually that's the wrong name. The Bible says casting out devils. True deliverance begins when a demon is out of you. You need somebody to teach you the word of God. Because it is the word of God that makes you free. So good. Not come out. Jesus. Come out is the beginning. Yeah. Now you have started the freedom walk in Christ. Hallelujah. But what makes you free? Not sets you free, but makes you free. Is the word of God. If you have no one to sit you down and to instruct you in the ways of God, you are still bound. <laughs> Casting out devils is the beginning. This is why when you come to this church, the first thing you notice, and I'm not saying this in a bad way, I'm just being honest. When you come and listen to me one time, two times, you cannot listen to anybody else. True, very true. Why? Because your soul has grown, increased Amen. beyond the place of your bondage. Yes. Now you start to look at things and you say, I can't believe I believe that. Yes. yes. I did not see a way out until I was given another. Wow. Yes. I can't believe I used to pray like that. Now I know this is the way to, you outgrew that stage. And you notice that those things you used to fight with at that stage is no longer a battle. If you're wise, you'll notice like, ah, I used to fight against this. Now I don't even fight. Now your battle is something else. So it is pushing you to grow. You see, spiritual battle is to make you aware of something you're missing. 
When that thing is delivered into you, the more of Christ you get, the more of yourself you lose. You outgrow that stage. I prophesy to somebody. May you elevate beyond where you are. I receive. For the glory of God. See. For the salvation of souls. I receive. In Jesus' name. So we have all these things confused because the foundation is wrong. No deliverance without scripture. The word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword. You cannot resist the devil without the word. When a demon gets cast out of you, it is somebody that has resisted him for you. Now they need to raise you up from milk to meat. That when Satan comes, you slap him. He says, I will never come. Not just, oh, anointing, I cover myself. No, Satan is also anointed. He's not afraid of your anointing. He's afraid for people who have the sword. Oh, let me say to somebody else. He's afraid of people who have what? The sword. A lot of the demonic attacks you have is because you don't know the word of God. Sit for two seconds, I promise I'm finishing. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, listen to what Jesus is saying to his disciples, who have received his life. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. No, the only one that carried the cross is Jesus. Why are you also carrying your cross? Is because there is a part that Jesus did not fulfill on earth. So if you really want him, he must use you to carry that portion of a cross. That was not his mission. His was to die for us. Ours is to win souls for him. Amen, amen. So if, let, let me find, where is the church? Let me, over here, over here, prophet. So if the blessing will interfere with you carrying the cross, he won't give you. There is a demand on your life. God is demanding from you. God is demanding from me. Jesus is saying, yes, I'm carrying the big cross. Remember his disciples said, oh, the three of them gathered and said, Lord, uh, can we uh, uh, see their mother came with them can one of my son sit on the left and one on the right Jesus said you don't know what you're asking for will you indeed take of the cup of suffering that I'm about to take then Jesus says you will not but indeed you will partake notice what he said he said this one you will not but indeed you will partake of it this one I'm about to go on you cannot be glorified with me because you cannot take this one I'm taking but you know what? You still take it. You still be a part of it. From the time Jesus ascended, when Peter was with Jesus, you hear about Peter and his wife. When Jesus ascended, you never hear about Peter's wife again. Sold out to God that he, the mention of his family is not there. Not saying he didn't have a family. The Peters died for the gospel. But when Jesus was with them, they denied him. But when they indeed gave their life, there was a demand on their life. Paul died. He was beheaded by Nero. Cut off his head. And he knew this would happen. They partook of the cross, but not in the same way. But they still did. That is what the Bible says. If we suffer with him, we will be what? Be glorified and reign with him. Whether you like it or not, there is a demand. There is a demand. God will demand. Because there are things that God wants to do on earth. That he could not do in his time because it was not for him to do, but it was for us to do. His mission was for three and a half years. This is what Jesus said. Greater works shall you. He did not say you will be greater than me. But he said greater works you will do because you are members of my body. Yes. 
So you need to investigate this within yourself. Lord, I want this blessing. If he demands it, will you give it to him? And you think giving it to him is because he's taking it. No, he is multiplying it to give it back to you. Amen. Amen. The woman before Elijah, Elijah comes and says, woman, feed me. She said, I'm baking my last cornbread for me and my son to eat and die. <laughs> and Elijah said, woman, make sure you make it, but make sure I get a portion. If she was not called by God, you see, God told Elijah, I have spoken to a woman I have instructed her to feed you many of you cannot follow through with God because you missed the voice when Elijah came and told her feed me she said but this is my last cake Elijah said make sure you feed me and nothing will end in your house the woman obeyed because she heard the voice when Elijah spoke what the Holy Spirit had spoken came alive inside of her. And by doing so, the flour and the oil never ran out. Why? She invested what God had given her back to God. And as a result, it increased. Amen. Whatever you put in God cannot end. This is why when they put in cornbread, they only sold what? Cornbread. Okay, let's just say cake. <laughs> Whatever they gave to God is what multiplied. The reason why you keep reading, uh, the, 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 the reason why you keep reaping a hundred dollars. You cannot reap beyond what you give. You give God five minutes of your time a day, God will also distribute his blessing in your life in the span of five minutes. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, amen. When God also comes, he comes with his blessing like this, and says, amen. Then you think it is a demon. No, it's you. <laughs> so listen to what he says. Can I have my verses back, please? God bless you. Hey. <laughs> Can you read it for me, sir, sir Todd? Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If uh -huh. any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Uh -huh. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Uh -huh. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Uh -huh. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Now when people preach this, they think it's solely about salvation. No, it's not. Because anyone that is following Jesus cannot die. Anyone that receives Jesus will not perish. It is going beyond that. He said, and he's saying this to his disciples. He's not saying it to people who are in the world. He's saying, anyone that wants me, you must understand that your life is no longer yours. That is the only way you bear fruits. If you try to save your life, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you gain it. Notice, whether you give your life to him or you don't, you're going to lose it. <laughs> if you try to save your life, you will lose it. If you give your life to me, you will lose it, but you will find it. Amen. Wait, 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 wait. Think about this for a second. You try to save your life, you will lose it. Meaning you will not have purpose. 
your life will be useless. But if you give yourself for his purpose, within your giving yourself, you will find your life within him. Amen. You will find your purpose within him. You will understand you are born to save certain individuals. Amen. To preach the gospel to certain individuals. Amen. To build orphanages. To build hospitals. To do things that will rescue certain people. You will find purpose within it. Let me give you my own testimony and I will finish with this. Let me give you my small testimony. I, have, I was destined to serve God. I've known that since I was six. I saw him. He has appeared to me. I have had encounters. I've known that. The supernatural was all around me from before. When I come from a family of musicians, everyone from my grandfather... My great-grandfather, my grandfather to myself, my uncles, my father, my brothers, everyone is in music. That's all we knew. My mom's family, they were judges. So very intellectual people. My father's side, all musicians. So when I was coming up, that's what I did. When I came to this country, I had even forgotten the mission of God when I was six. It is when God appeared to me here that he reminded me of it. I never wanted to do church. I love Jesus. I've loved Jesus all my life, but I wasn't seeking to stand in front of people. Never cared for it. So God sends me here. I come here and start producing music. The first, one of the first people I worked with is even my son, Josiah. He was a, he's a songwriter. He was an a and We were working, working, and doing a lot of things. I got Grammy nominations and this. Then I started to feel, what am I missing wrong because something is wrong? I decided to fast and pray. That's when the Lord came back to me. And told me, remember what I told you when you were six? This is what I'm sending you to do here. Remember I told you where you will start your church? Look at where you are. Then it hit me. I was like, ah. Then he told me, from now on, give me all your Thursdays. I have not worked on a Thursday since 2012. It did not matter what opportunity was given to me. If it was on that day, I will not do it. I will be at the house teaching. My publisher started getting upset with me. I'm not finishing projects because now when I go on Thursday to minister in the house, it will consume me so much and it will take prayer for me to do that. And I felt like I am missing out. I am seeing others of my friends doing great things. And I'm like, I felt like I lost myself because this is all I know. Even though I love God, I felt like, ah, then within it, I started now realizing not only the appearance of God in my life, I started to understand the value of my life. That if I am not there, that individual that got healing from cancer, that woman that was barren, if she could not have that child, what will my life mean? Yes, I will be doing this, making money, but there will be people dying that I could have saved. So I laid down my life. And by laying down my life, I found you. Amen. Hallelujah. And I found myself in Christ. I realized that what was I doing wasting my time? For another will not be wasting their time because that's where God has sent them. Your beginning is not your end. Where you start is not where you're finishing. There is a purpose. Jesus was a carpenter. He was acquainted with wood. Because that will be the instrument of our salvation, the cross. Moses was accounted with the the shepherd's staff. Not knowing it will be the instrument of deliverance. He will go into war, not with guns, not with swords. With the same staff. Used for sheep is the one that God used to part the sea. Where you start is not your end. You will feel like you're losing yourself when you're going to Christ. But actually, you are transitioning from what was going to end in death into a purposeful life. Hallelujah. That will be a benefit not just to you, but to every single individual that God has destined for you. 
We were sent to be somebody's answer to prayer. If our life does not answer somebody's prayer, we have not lived for God. All my fasting, all my praying, all my seeking God, all this, I thought it was for me. I didn't know it was for you. Then when I came to realize it, I intensified it for you. And the more I did that, God increased me. What I wanted for my life, I have never, I was, I don't know who I was talking to. I said, I have never asked God for money. I actually have never. Never in my life. I've never sat down and said, Father, send me money. God is my witness. If I'm not saying the truth, may the Holy Spirit take my life. I have never knelt down to say, Father, I need money. I have never done that in my life. The moment the Lord came to me and said, you take care of my people, I'll take care of you. That was the, I've never, I've never, even when I was young, I never. Not that it is bad, but the Lord said, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. This is David saying, no, he seed beg for bread. If you're begging for bread, something went off. Jesus said, look at the ravens, the, the birds of the air. They don't sow, they don't do any of this thing, but I take care of them. How much more for you? You are more important. Way more important than the birds. Jesus is saying, you are better, more important to him. But you are trying to save yourself. That's why you're losing. And the devil knows this. Because the biggest stigma, especially right now in America, in Africa we don't have these problems. They may be small, but they are not like in this country and the Western world in general. You see, the reason why spirituality is dead in the Western world is because you don't apply spiritual principles. You want to intellectualize everything to the point you miss what is spiritual, that it is not intellectual. Spiritual things are foolish to the natural and carnal man. So anyone that is wise when it comes to spiritual things, they are fool. Jesus prayed, he said, Father, I thank you that you have seen it right to you to reveal it to the babies and the sucklings. Those people under mine are the ones you chose to reveal it to. Right now you go online, everybody is arguing about tithe, everybody is arguing about giving. Why is that an argument? It's in your Bible. Do you know it's an argument? The devil has poisoned you so that you don't receive from God. One of my mentors is here. Prophet Emmanuel is here. From the time he's known me, he will tell you my heart has always to give. I've always been like that. There is no one around me. Anyone that tells you that they know me and I took from them is a liar, a deceiver. It's a lie. It's a big time lie. Big time lie. Anyone that has known me personally, they know. I will never do anything like that because I have. But the reason why you want to prophesy you can't see. The people who are doing it, you don't observe to see the life they live. You want it on your terms, but you don't know what people have to do. Jesus wanted to, gl to be glorified. He had to give his life. Jesus wanted to heal the sick. He had to fast 40 days and 40 nights. Moses wanted to deliver. God put him through. Even though God appeared to him, he put him through a process. Jesus is in church looking at how people are giving. If your pastor tells you, hey, you know, you've been slacking on tithe. We would never do it in Revelation Church. But people will say, oh, they just want money. No, it's biblical. You are a member of the church. What you give supports the church. You committed to it. They are in their right to ask you. When Ananias and Sapphira came to give, the Holy Spirit was upset. Nobody obligated you to do. Why did you have to lie? Notice God was angry. You think God would just receive what Ananias and Sapphira gave? God was angry. He said, no, 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 no. Why did you feel to do this because other people are doing it? 
Why couldn't you just be honest? You see, it is about the purity of the uh, heart. It's not about your giving. God doesn't care for it. If something is from God, God will take care of it. But the reason why people are struggling in the church is because you don't know the principles of the spirit. God appears to, to Abraham in the same Genesis 15. He tells him, I will do this. Go abroad. See how many stars are in the sky. I will give you descendants like that. Then Abraham asked God, Abraham asks God, Lord, what must I do to get this promise? God tells him, go and get this offering from your house now and offer it to me. I thought God just said it. He didn't need him to do that. It's a spiritual principle. That should be the least. You don't see Hindus arguing about giving. Yet they are serving other things. You don't see Muslims arguing about this. Yet they, are, they, they, don't, they don't know the true God you know. They have no clue. They do a lot of charitable things. Because they understand the principle of giving is a spiritual principle. It will work for the good and the bad. That's just how it is. But Christians will argue because we have canalized God. We have made God an idol. We have made God flesh and blood. We forget that God has his own ways, not our ways. That even some men of God have come out now because of pure pressure. They are starting to deny what is scriptural. It's a shame. And you also know now when they were telling you to give, they were not asking for it because it was spiritual to them. It was a means to increase themselves. That is why they hide their blessing from you. Because they are promising you things that God did not say. What they said by themselves. If, if you find, if you find uh, $20, $24 now, you get a 24-hour miracle. They can't prophesy, but they know you need to give $24. That is a suspect. They cannot look at you and say, this is your problem. This is your issue. God says this, 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 and this. How can you hear money, but you cannot hear about my problem? Amen, amen. Many of them who are flowing from this place, now they feel like, their time is coming to an end. They have to answer to God. They are coming to denounce things to make themselves right with God. But not that the principle was wrong. It was right. How many times have I proven it here in church? A man was in court. He was guilty. God told me, you are guilty. And I told him, you are guilty. Your case started because of this woman in 2016 or something. God said, I asked God, what do I do? God told him told me put your hands in oil i put my it's on video i put my hands and it happened right here and i was actually talking to him from here i put my hands in oil god said i have washed his hand look at his hands oil was dripping from his hands he didn't touch the anointing oil the lord told him tell him to find a seed of 12 to lay it on the altar and to go home it's done the next day the jury was going to decide and he was guilty his own lawyer told him my friend you're guilty Everything in court that could go bad went bad. He gave what he was giving. He went in the morning. They say, ah, there's been some change in the case. Huh? A few hours later, all of the jurors came back and say, ah, not guilty, not guilty, not guilty. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah. He comes back to church to give thanks to God. And he says, now I understand why God said 12. There were 12 jurors and all of the... These are spiritual principles. The man who they wanted to lock him up for life. His daughter, I took the envelope from the daughter. I said, there is a man like Peter in prison. She said, yes, that's my husband. I said, for the sake of your daughter, I'm going to do this. My only condition is this. I need your husband to come and give thanks to God and he must completely give his life to God. She said, yes, he will do that. I said, go by Wednesday. The case will be thrown out. Wanted for murder. First degree murder, not guilty. Second degree murder, not guilty. Manslaughter, not guilty. And when they came to church, what did I do? You saw it here. I took $10,000, wrote a check. I gave him and said, go and start over with your family. Yes. This are not, we are not telling you things we don't do. Yes. 
Not the church. The church didn't do that. I did that. The reason why we have done this is because we have forgotten there is a spiritual demand. There is something God is requiring from you. There is something that God needs from you. Will you serve his kingdom in truth? Or is it just about you advancing you? Or is it really about him that when you sleep, you think about him, Lord, what can I do for you while I'm still in this world? When I stand before you on that day, will you receive me and say, faithful servant, what did I steward on earth? The reason why God is not obligated to protect your finances is because you don't do anything for him. The reason why God is not obligated to protect your health is because you don't live for him. The reason why God is not obligated to keep your children is because you have not trained, up to, you have not trained them up to serve him after you. What will they continue for God after your time? You live like it's only about you. You don't think anyone that does not think of their future in heaven, even your salv salvation is questionable. Because every day people are dying. Jesus said it is better to be in a house of mourning than a house of celebration. Because it wakes you up to realize that one day, if he does not come in the sky, my body will also be put down. What would I leave behind that will continue to do the work of God, that will carry my name on? Even in heaven with Jesus, I'm smiling, but I'm still winning souls. Amen. Peter is still winning souls. Yes. Moses is still winning souls. Amen. This is why the Lazarus and the rich man, the rich man was with Father Abraham. He says, Father Abraham, send me back to warn my brothers. He says, ah, let them listen to Moses and the prophets. Because their work is still winning people. Yes, 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 yes. After you, you, the Bible says you are written epistle. Yes. How many people are you bringing to Jesus? Yes. Have you placed a demand? Have you given yourself to go and say, Father, yes, I accept. Place a demand on me. On. When you accept this, God will wake you up to pray for people you don't even like. Yes. Are you okay with that? God will send you to people people have rejected. Will you accept that? Because those are the people that nobody wants, but God wants them. You have already received Jesus. Whom are you giving Jesus to? Whom are you giving Jesus to? The true blessing that comes from the king that when you sleep at night, you don't look over your shoulder. Comes by doing his service. That what he has given to you, you are using it for him. Then you don't sit with questions, oh father, I don't know if I sinned with this. I don't know if I... You live comfortably. Listen to me. The reason why I dress the way I want, the reason why I can drive what I want, I can live the way I want, is because in my conscience, everything that God demands of me, I do. So I'm not worried about anyone. Amen. I am not worried. Because I know where I stand with God. Many of you, this is how you know if you have really given yourself to God. If somebody just says, why are you dressing like that? You shouldn't dress like that. You change. Why are you buying a, a, a new car? There are so many people starving. Why don't you start by commenting, by selling your computer or your cell phone and donate the money, then I will follow your example. So many people want you to do things that they are not doing. Do it, then we'll follow you. You don't need 10 cars. Okay. You may not, but I do. Maybe I want something different every day. I am serving God in peace. He's satisfying me. Why do you want me to be miserable? You should desire for me to be even more energized Amen. to win more souls. Amen. Some of us are not like those men of God coming to tell you, buy for me this. We can do it ourselves. There is a demand that God has on your life. There is a word that God will send to you. When God says he will bless you today, 
when we pray. Understand that it's not just for you. It is for your children, your children's children, and those around you. If God says he's going to increase you, understand that that increase must overflow to other people, not just to you. Amen. When God says he will protect you, you have to understand that you need to put your eye on weak people that you can be a covering for them when danger comes. It is not just about you. It is not. Are you listening to me? Yes. Please open your ears. It is not just about you. It is not just about you. Can you hear me? Yes. Touch somebody next to you and tell them it is not just about you. It is not just about you. I can't hear you. It is it's not, not just, just about, about you. you. I can't hear you. It, it is not just about you. you. One more time. It, it is, is not just about you. It is not just about you. Jesus didn't die because for himself, for us. If it ends with you, then the prophetic word cannot manifest because you have not given yourself for him yet. As we stand and pray today, know that your deliverance must benefit somebody. Amen. Your increase must benefit somebody. Amen. Your elevation must benefit somebody. Amen. If it does not extend to someone, then you have not given your life. I want you to look to him. I want you to sincerely, truthfully look to the king. Truthfully. Truthfully look to the king. Sincerely look to the king. With everything that is in you, look to him. And answer that question before him. Answer that call before him. That would say, Father, indeed, I will give my life for you. Because if I keep it, it will perish. I desire, I desire with everything that is in me. To fulfill something for you. That is our safe place. Our precious Lord Jesus showed us the way. He said this. I only do what I have seen the Father do. Amen. And by doing that he received everything that he wanted. Because Jesus did not want his people to disappear, to die. So he had to follow what the Father wants. Can you follow what the Father wants? If he requires of you, if he demands from you, will you be able to do that? This is not about prayer. This is about a decision. When you decide, then you can pray. What you will ever give to God, whether it is your time, whether it's your resources, you will never lose it. It will come back to you even more. Some of you, the reason why your children are not getting delivered is you're holding on to them. You're obsessed with them. You can't even pray to God without letting that go. You don't trust God to be able to take care of them. That their journey will end up in his presence because you have surrendered them to him. Amen. But you can't even think like that because for you, for you, it is about what you want to happen to your children, not what God wants. Not, okay, Lord, you know what? Whatever you want for my children, let it be so. I accept. Let it be so. I know that they will not perish. As a spiritual authority over them, I surrender them in your hands. May they end up in your hands. But you want what you want. You don't want what God wants. Our children came to us. Not for us, for him. We were just a portal. Yeah. There's a place that our responsibility cannot extend. It's only God who can extend. It goes the same for your business. If you cannot control it, it's God's time. And it's God's turn. If it is beyond your control. It's God's time and it's God's turn. Let God do what he wants. Surrender it. Amen. 
If you cannot stop and break a certain habit, accept God's help. Paul prayed. said, Lord, this thorn in my flesh, deliver me. God said, hey, my grace is sufficient. God didn't say, I am sending angel. He said, there is grace you need to receive. And it is sufficient. Open yourself to that. When you give yourself to him, you have received grace. That is why it's called the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. When you give your life, you receive the grace that will attract the Holy Spirit, that will attract the eyes of the Father on you. Jesus said, those who keep my command, I will, I will introduce them to my Father. Me and my Father will come and make our home with the person. If you want the eye of God to be on you, when he calls you to do something, you do it. His father will come with him to you. Lift your hands to him. And I want you to lift your voice sincerely. This is one of the most important prayers you can ever pray. Because this is a prayer that will bring you life. This is a prayer that will make you find your life. You need to cry sincerely to him and say, Father, I am ready to truly follow you. Father, I am ready to really see you. Father, I am ready to give myself to you. My Lord, open my eyes to see what you want me to do. Open my mind to understand what you want me to do. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Father, Lift up your voice. Father, I am ready. Father, I am ready. Father, I am ready.
your voice. Lift 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 your voice. demonstrated is to increase your faith to know you're in the right place. Amen. Jesus would not be able to prophesy to all of you. Not that he can't. That is not the point. The point is that if a man can look at somebody and know the secrets of things that happened when they were not present, that happened years ago, you know that God is in that place. This is to make you to confess Jesus. It's not to make you to look to me. Amen. It's to make you know that if Jesus could speak to somebody like me, he can speak to you, he can speak to you, amen. he can attend to you, and especially those who are clapping, receive it. Amen, amen. Listen to me, children of God. Sometimes our greatest attack will come from the people we love. I'm saying something to you in parable. Sometimes our greatest battle will come from people we love. Yes. But Jesus was not tested by the Pharisees. His own brothers and sisters are the ones that were the first skeptics. Professor! <laughs> You're one of seven. And they didn't believe you. <laughs> but it is always to validate. When people applaud you, be scared. If what you do never, you see, you will win, but there must be some form of opposition. Not because it will win. They can never overcome us. 
but that opposition proves that you have shaken hell amen amen, amen. or let me talk to somebody that amen. is amen amen you see what people understand they kill what they don't understand they talk about so it's better for people to talk about you than to understand you in order to kill you that's good so good look at me i'm a mystery they don't know where i came from how i do what i'm doing and it's fine they will talk but they can never touch me amen. the day they know me for real then they will know how to finish me amen so god hides us he will allow people to say things because it will increase what god put inside of you amen say father i hide my life in you father i hide my life in you father i hide my life in you father i hide my family's life in you i hide my family lift up your voice and begin to call on his name i hide my to God what you desire the king is ready to give it to you amen no your amen is too small amen your amen is too small amen i said your amen is too small amen what god has prepared for you You need to believe God in order to receive it. Amen. If God reveals it to you some of you will quit the you will say no this cannot be real. But it is so big that it will make you to doubt God. Say father surprise me. Father surprise me. Father surprise me. Father surprise me. He go beyond what I can comprehend. Go beyond what I can comprehend. Lift up your voice and pray for God to surprise you.
Hallelujah. 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 Listen to me. I want you to present to God what you want. But when you pray, you're going to say something to God. You're going to tell God that as you give me this, I am giving it back to you. Amen. And I know by giving it to you, it is secure for me. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. did you come with Trace. never tell me names is it you okay just stay there it's okay lift your hands where, where did you come from are you in LA or you San came? Diego you came from San Diego yes okay beautiful please just put this on the altar let me pray for you as quickly as I can hallelujah Halle <laughs> professor now the prophecy that I gave to her, you need a similar kind of intervention. Prof the problem is your situation has already crossed over to the other side. Prophesy. Prophesy. I don't like this quiet prophesy thing. I prophesy. prophesy. I want people that are on fire for Jesus. <laughs> Listen to me. If you understood what prophecy is, you will burn for God. Amen. You see, when you pray, Father, do this. The Bible says by a prophet was Israel delivered and by a prophet was it preserved. Amen. Not by prophecy, by a prophet. Yeah. When a prophet comes to talk to you, it's because God has decided to speak to you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah! You see, for us, we don't have the label prophet. We were born prophets. Amen. We are not saying something that we are not. Amen. 
We are saying what God has made us to be. Nobody can graduate to be prophet. You are either born one or you're not. Amen. So God wants to fight for you, woman of God. Amen. Because you have sought God, God is going to rescue you. Amen. We need to pray for you because there is an issue spiritually. Prophesy. Prophesy. Amen. Prophesy. The Lord had opened my eyes by his angel and I saw visions of God and when I saw visions of God I saw something that was very interesting I saw people that you come from and I saw them not being in one place and when I was watching this vision I was seeing them entering one country here there will be in like Kenya where I grew up they would travel to Uganda they would travel to another country and then they would come back again so I was asking God why are these people moving like this I did not understand the vision are you listening to me yes prophesy where are your parents they work with an the airline they retired but they used to work with Kenya Airways okay prophesy, prophesy. prophesy. okay now the reason why we need to pray why god showed me this it is because number one god has graced you and god has loved you but things have not worked for you amen True. things have been broken for you True. every time you're trying to do something is going bad True. your own house is scattered in pieces True. Satan has just destroyed everything for you. True. You can't hold on to anything. True. Court battle, court battle, this battle, that battle. You are just fighting 24-7. True. Prophesy. 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 Your fight is because of something in the spirit. Prophesy. There was a season that you are very close to God. True. And your parents raised you to love God and to run after God. True. But what happened was that when God opened the door for you to be by yourself, you turned your back on God. True. Huh? True. Professor. You turned your back on God. And the moment that happened, everything in your life started to fall apart. True. Everything just started to collapse. True. But God is saying what you thought was a mistake was to reveal to you that God is all that you need in life. True. Amen. Not anything that you can formulate. Amen. When you turned your back on God, God allowed you to go into a job-like season. You started losing everything, everything going apart, everybody turning against you. Everything that you thought would stay did not stay. True. But God is saying, this was to bring you back to himself. So that when now he's about to bless you, Amen. you will be able to keep that blessing. Amen. You'll be able to hold on to the blessing of God. Ah, your clapping just made me stop prophesying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Lift what you have brought to God. Lift it up. Lift those uh, pictures, the people that you have brought before God's presence. Lift it up. Lift it up. Some of you have prayer requests in your heart. Present them before God. I'm about to pray for those ones. And even those who are at home that have people, we're about to pray for them. Hallelujah. 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 All you need is Jesus says yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't need me to speak. You need him to speak. Amen. I said you need him to speak. Amen. 
I can hear amens on this side. I don't know about this side. Amen. amen. I can hear amen online, but I don't know if I can hear amen. 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 Whatever you're trusting God for, God is able to do it. I said the Lord is able to do it. I said the Lord is able to do it. Amen. You see, the atmosphere determines the outcome. It is not just the prayer, but it is the atmosphere. Jesus, our Lord, went to a place, and the Bible says that he could do no miracles because the atmosphere, even though it was Jesus, the Bible says he could do no miracles. You are in an atmosphere of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said you are in the atmosphere of faith. You see, when you're in the atmosphere of faith, it is no longer about your faith. It is a corporate faith. One can set a thousand to flight. Two can set what? Ten thousand. We are more than two and we are believing God for them. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So it is not just about your faith. The faith of your neighbor is helping you. Amen. The faith of the prophet is there for you. Amen. Whatever you will pronounce before God, now you understand that those things that you desire, God wants something to do with it. God wants to manifest himself through it. God wants to show himself through it. So if you can present it saying, Lord, I am giving it to you, not only for you to intervene, but let your purpose be fulfilled through it, through this person, through this situation. A change is guaranteed. Amen. Lift it to heaven. Join your faith with mine as I pray for you. My Lord and my God, all your people that are here, you know their desire, what they are waiting for, what they have been praying for, whether they are at home or they are here presently. Lord Jesus, your hand is not short to deliver, nor your ears dull to hear. You know their desires. You know their prayers. You know their suffering. You know them too well. You are the one who ordained for them to come to this place. It is not by our strength that we are here. It is by your strength. Lord, you brought them in your presence so that they can receive healing, so that they can receive deliverance, so that they can receive transformation, so that they can receive elevation, so that, Lord, they can be sanctified, purified, set apart for your purpose. That prayer that they have, oh Lord, let it be answered. That desire they have, oh Lord, let them receive an answer. That request God they have before you, do it for them. Reveal yourself through that storm. Reveal yourself through that sickness. Reveal yourself through that misfortune. Reveal yourself through that limitation. Show yourself in a powerful, phenomenal way. That they will know you are the God who heals, that blesses, that transforms. You are the God who does the impossible. No one can heal except you, Jesus. No one can deliver except you, Jesus. No one can redeem except you, Jesus. You are all and all our Lord and our God. Lord, as your people step out, let miracle after miracle after miracle let testimony after testimony after testimony let there be breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough let there be elevation after elevation 
Let there be glory to greater glory. Especially those who are shouting amen. Amen. Father, let their cases be settled. I said, let their cases be settled. Father, I declare that medical bill to be settled. I declare that debt to be settled. I declare that financial difficulty to be settled. I declare that contention in the marriage to be settled. I declare that relationship that is broken to be settled. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Father, let it be settled. Father, let it be settled. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Everything that has to do with me. Everything that has to do with me. Let it be settled. Let it be settled. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Everything that has to do with me. Everything that has to do with me. Let it be settled. Let it be settled. Things to do with my family. Things to do with my family. With my children. With my children. Let it be settled. Let it be settled. For your glory. For your glory. In the name of Jesus. Clap your hands if you believed it is done. Hallelujah. When you come to the front to lay your seat, to lay your offering, to lay whatever you want to give to God, whether the picture of the individual is on the phone or is on an envelope, Let it touch the altar. Are you listening to me? Your amen is too small. Amen. Amen. Let it just touch the altar. Listen to me. Beginning tomorrow you will testify. Receive it. Amen. I said beginning today you will testify. Amen. I said you will begin to testify. Amen. Are you sure you believe this? Yes. If you believe this, wave your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you come and give to God, come giving in faith. Come giving in faith and great expectation don't let the devil ruin your expectation God will outdo your expectation Amen. you see we don't aim high in Christ so that if he comes low we are satisfied no in Christ where you aim he will go beyond amen, amen. oh this amen maybe is for those who are online hallelujah Lift what you want to give to God. Lift it. Lift it to heaven. I want you to speak a word of love to Jesus as you're about to give him. I want you to pray as you're ready to present it to God. Lift up your voice and pray. Tell him how much you love him before you come and give. Hallelujah. Lift your voice. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice as you pray. Marusta katara babandi libra dosa babaya. Kente libra dosa baradi asto kara babaya. Masoprani kastori ante libabe. Ilana masoprana masanta. We thank you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you praise. We thank you for the many, many miracles. In the mighty name of Jesus. And let all that are in agreement shout, Yeah! Yeah! Yeah!
Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful time that we've had in this presence. Go from this place knowing that you are blessed. Go from this place knowing that there's a turn around in your life. That you're the head and not the tail. That everything is turning around for good on your behalf. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Remember to invite a friend, a family for Sunday. And also on uh, Saturday, we are lifting Miami before the throne of grace. We are also praying for the church. We are praying for you. So if you can, make it from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock on Saturdays. Amen. God richly bless you. We love you. Amen. Wait, like two, wow, wow, wow. What an incredible Thursday service. I was so blessed today. I hope you were as well. The ending was phenomenal. I, I'm sitting here so honored and so blessed to be able to join my faith, not only with the whole congregation, but also with the prophet. So I already know what I prayed for is already going to be answered. It's already answered. So I'm excited for the testimonies. I'm excited for your testimony. So make sure to share and let the whole world know that Jesus Christ is moving and is here at Revelation Church. A few announcements that I don't want you to forget about. We have Man Cave coming up on October 22nd at 4 p.m. here at Revelation Church. And for everyone who can't come in person, you can uh, watch online. It will be live streamed. We also have Fall Fest coming up at the end of the month on October 29th here at Revelation Church from 1 to 5 p.m. So bring the whole family. Kids are encouraged to dress up. So we can't wait to see you here for Fall Fest. Until then, we'll see you at Sunday at 10 a.m. for our Sunday service. God bless you and have an amazing week.